Hey guys, what's going on? FY Mop on here, and welcome back to Go Create. The Goblin Bakery. Since we last left off, we managed to finish off our We managed to finish off the auto smelter, mainly. We did some tweaking there, did a bit of things here and there, just made it all sorted. Now, for this stream. What we're going to be doing is we're going to make a few more auto farms, just repeat the uh, design that we had beforehand. We're going to try and automate it somewhat, but the key thing that we want to get over is finally making a barn to at least get some basic storage in play, because we're running out of room in our current house, and I kind of want to leave that for the more cooking and crafting sort of, sort of things. But besides that, we are pretty much good to go. So, without further ado, let's get into things and see what happens. Now it's going to take a time time to load as usual, so yeah, we're just going to have to see how things play out. Uh, but I will update you guys on something else that I've been thinking about. And honestly, it really depends on what we do, but this is for uh, when it happens on Friday. Honestly, I'm not sure what I've... Honestly, I could go with anything on my uh, game list. I'm just trying to figure out what would be a good game. But there's a few games out there that I could probably go with, and it'd be pretty alright. Just because it's set up, though, I think I'm going to have to go with Sticks. That, or I go with something completely off-shooting. I'll have to decide when I finally get into it, but... We'll see, we'll see. It really depends on how I want to play this, because I've got quite a few things I can do. And there is something that I've actually been meaning to do, but... I'm not sure how well it's going to go. I, I guess we'll see, ultimately. Sure. Yeah, we'll have to see how it goes in the end, but I'm probably going to be playing Sticks. Just because I want something difficult in uh, the roster, just so I have some... Uh... Okay, there we go. Yeah, I just want something difficult to play, so I'm going to go with Sticks and Goblin difficulty most likely, so that's going to be fun. Alright, but yeah, without further ado, we've got this. I just started up as uh, I left it off, so nothing too drastic has changed in this area. I mean, this is uh, going off-put like crazy. Uh, it seems that the iron ore isn't going as, as intended, but that's an easy fix. I mean, yeah, literally if I just chop this here, I just toss this there, there we go, and it'll just slowly cook as needed. Then we just place the slabs back. Like so. I'm not sure whether everything's going to cook as normal, but it should, supposedly. And we'll just leave it as is. It's already pouring in, already doing its job. I don't need to complain too much. I just hope this uh, grinder's doing it, is uh, making it quick enough. But we'll see, we'll see. Alright, but I've already done the fixing there, I've already done this. Yeah, I'm pretty much good. Alright, so that's the building there. The only other thing we have to do is just set up this farm here. Make sure that's going correctly, and we should be perfect. That does mean I'm going to have to set something up for the uh, redstone channels and everything, though. But it should be working as intended. Yeah, it should be. Well, for now, we're not too worried. Alright, now I've got to set up the farm for this one. I should probably set up an iron chest on uh, either, but honestly, I don't think that's going to work as intended, so... I think we'll just go for the normal chests here. Okay, let's set things up. We're going to need gantry shafts, because that's going to be a necessary thing for this. Not like that, but here we go, like so. 
and we're just gonna build out. At least until we get to one point off, I think. Okay, we've ran out. That's perfectly fine. We can always make more gantry shafts, which is cool. All right, gantry shafts. Oh, right, we're also going to need a gantry carriage as well. So let's start with the shafts, then we'll go for the carriage. We're going to need two sh We're going to get- all we're going to keep all our shafts on us. We're obviously going to need the indecite funnels. We're going to get one uh, mechanical belt for it. We're going to get the cog wheels. We're going to get the large cog wheels. We are going to put the... Uh, debris scraps, I'm not sure where that's gonna go. I'll just put it away. Go away. Well, as the stone brick. The quartz can go here. Uh, dark oak can go here. There we go. Alright, now we just gotta make everything. We're gonna get some redstone here. We're gonna get the rest of the andesites. We are actually gonna need more andesite from the looks of it, so we're gonna have to find a surplus of that. Which, I mean, shouldn't be too hard because we can always dig under underground. That is an option after all. The slime sling, but we're gonna save that for a later day. Top hats, we could go to the buried treasure chest as well, so that's an option. But no need to do that just yet. And charcoal can go here for now. Okie dokie. With that out of the way, we just need to get andesite, which is relatively hard to get. Well, it depends on what you're doing. Uh, for this, I think I make a new pickaxe, because I don't exactly want to be wasting all my uh, diamond durability on this. So we're going to get two iron pickaxes for this. Yep. I'm going to use these iron picks to get only andesite. Although, I could just use this, couldn't I? I could use the, uh... I could use the, uh... Alright, well, first, let's actually turn this on, so... Yeah, we just need a lever here. The cart. Get the lever going. Get the car assembler. And we're gonna need this, uh we're gonna need this chest miner. Well not not chest, but Yeah, we're gonna need both machines, though. Okay, but this machine is probably the drill. So I'll put this away in our bag for now. There we go. And this contraption can rest here. Alright. That is our supply sorted. We need to get ourselves some andesite to start with. So that is going to be our main goal. And usually the best way to go about getting andesite is literally just go down here. I mean, there's stone everywhere, after all. Might as well check it out. Let's see. Kinda wish there was Vein Miner, but we can't hope for all of that, can we? No, instead we just mine from this andesite, uh, little cluster here. It'll have to do. Okay, andesite. Alright, not bad. 
This is a perfect cluster for us. And I should be able to find some as well in the Twilight Forest, I would imagine. So that's another thing we can look forward to. At least I hope. Okay, and a site. Here it is. Okay. Alright, that's stone. Stone. Take that. Alright. Not bad. Cool. Okay. Then we should be fine. And a site there. Two pieces here. Alright. There's an site piece here. There we go. And is there any more that I can see? No, it doesn't look like it. Otherwise, it looked a bit different. Okay. Uh, here's some more andesite. Not sure how much we're going to get, but we'll get some at least. Right, cool. Perfect. Uh, is there any more? Uh, there is. There's some here. Perfect. We'll grab this tidbit while we can. Managed to unlock some redstone as a bit of a boon. Here we go. Alright. Nice. I'll light this up so we can see a bit better. While we're collecting andesite, of course. We do have a plethora of iron, so we're not in any immediate rush for the, uh, for any more iron material. And besides, if we need to, we can rely on a goblin to help us. Of course, we're going to need to eventually name tag one. And hopefully we can get one with a mending pickaxe, but I don't hold my hopes there. Because they do have rare drops and whatnot, but I don't really expect them to have anything too special. Just special enough that it's going to help. In some, you know, capacity. Okay, grab those. Okay, hop to this side so we can take out these. Okay. Nice, nice. And we're probably going to run out of one pick at least, if we uh, keep going as we have been. Which is good, enough for me. Don't want to get with the rocky stone, though. Okay, solid. Get everything here. That is clay. Cool. Not needed, though. <laughs> We'll put a torch up here just in case. Seems like there's some more andesite on this side as well as on the walls and floor here, so... Quickly drill all this, I suppose. Well, not drill, but you know what I mean. We are going to absolutely need more rock, I'm suspecting. But we should be fine for the most part. Okay, andesite... It's rocky stone. We don't need rocky stone specifically. And a site. There's some on the roof here, so we'll grab that. There we go. Nice. And there's a bit here that we haven't grabbed, so we'll grab those. Managed to go through one pickaxe worth. That's perfectly fine by me. Even unveiled an emerald. Nice. That is nearly four stacks worth. That's quite impressive for a number. Uh, is there any more? Uh, there's a bit here, which we can mine into. Perfect. We're going to try and get two pickaxes worth, but if we can't, we can't. If we can, we can. 
But basically, the more andesite we have, the more machines we can craft, the more machines we can craft. That's just overall just a good thing. So that's nice. Rocky stone, don't need it. I guess rocky stone is connected constantly to andesite, so that's something to keep note of, I suppose. Might actually be a good thing. But then again, it could just be random generation. I've just been getting lucky with it. Alas. Plenty of andesite to go around. Okay. Nice. Here we go. And... Yeah, there we go. Even more. Guess we'll go this direction real quick. Get the andesite here. Place a light here so we can see a bit better. Chop that down. Okay, just got this side now to deal with. Just do this, clear out most of the andesite we can. Out that stone, andesite. Okay, that's stone. All right, seems we ran out of inventory space. That's perfectly fine with us. We can eat way to compensate just a little bit. That should be two stacks worth. That should be uh, enough for our supply. Okay. Another set done. There we go. Almost there. With this vein anyways. There we go. Now we just got a bit here to deal with, I do believe. I'm tempted to mine the lapis. I might as well. Why not, right? It's just sitting there. Okay. Yep, our inventory is still fine, so that's good. We're probably going to run out of this pickaxe durability by the time we are done, though. So we'll just probably wrap up a stack with the diamond pickaxe and then be good to go. Although, it could end the vein. So, either whatever comes first, I suppose. Andesite here. Okay, more andesite. Yep. Yeah, the pickaxe is going to run out at this rate, so that's good. Means we're collecting as much as we possibly can. Okay, we'll just finish up this stack here and we should be good. Okay, that's 8, that brings it to 50, so 14. That makes 11, so three more. There we go. I'm not sure if this is a perfect amount, but it should be enough for plenty. At least enough to uh, satisfy my needs. Uh, now, all we need to do is... Hey, buddy. 
Uh, gravel, yep. Cobble as it is, so... This is... Stacks here, perfect. Hey, buddy, one. Thank you kindly. I think that's everything. Yep. Emerald. To be used. And we no longer need the trader at this point because we've basically traded everything that we wanted to. Uh, it appears I've got a bunch of crushed iron ore in my inventory, so I should probably get that on the belt at some point. Or at least in a chest, I should say. But that's besides the point. Took a bit of mining, but that is the necessary sacrifice we have to make when trying to get the inventory made. There we go. Just zoom up. There we go. Now, we take the stack of iron here, turn it onto nuggets, because we can. And now, we make as much andesite as possible. Well, we make as much, um, not zinc, but andesite alloy as we can. Hey, we're actually, we actually ran out of materials, surprising enough. Hmm. That's actually impressive to run out of, uh, as a result of this. Jeez. Okay, we still need a bit more, surprising enough. We'll get 12 more stacks. Should be enough. There we go. We'll turn the rest into uh, the nuggets away. Is there anything in here that we need to uh, put away? Contraptions are here, so we'll have to see what one's what, but it should be fine, all the same. Okay. Worlds, because we're going to need to turn those into blocks. There we go. Twelve of them. Uh, emeralds, nice. 
Andesite alloys can be, well, are basically at the biggest point now. Uh, let's see, anything else that I need to cover? Not really. How's the uh, inventory for items? Th those are doing good. Okay, I think everything's being ground. But not sure. I'll have to check just to be sure, but we'll see if uh, things degenerated or not. Essentially. Pop into here. We've just got to check on the chest, really. Uh, it looks like everything managed to process real quick, actually, surprising enough. Yeah, no, everything did, I think. Although it looks a bit smaller than I originally had thought. Hmm. I might have might have missed some chances there, but that's fine. Worst case, I can always just make it quicker. But so far, I think it works. As for how much we're going to get, well, I guess three stacks roughly of everything, or six stacks of roughly of everything, should be fine. We'll get a ton of zinc, we'll get a ton of copper. Should definitely get a ton of materials, put simply, which is good. Uh, with that, though, we put the gold... And let's go about doing that auto farm and just repeating the uh, process. So first we're going to need gantry carriages. That's simple enough. We just need redstone. Thankfully we got some on hand, so that's an easy win there. Uh, I think it's two andesite and one redstone. Yep, there we go. That'll get us the gantry shafts we need. And we just get everything out from here. So we're going to need cogs. We're gonna need. We're gonna need a mechanical belt. We've already got the redstone. We've got the andesite alloys in a bunch, so no need to worry there. Okay, we are going to need a gantry carrier, obviously. Uh, we should worry about the rest later, though. I think. Yeah, we'll worry about the rest later. We've got the majority is essentially what we need. Okay, this should be the limit. Yep. A shaft here. Let's go over what we need. Okay, yeah, this... Hmm. Wish I could move this without breaking the contents. Okay, there is no dolly, so we can't move that. Uh, is there a chest mover or something? Nope. But I assume what we can do is we can... set up some sort of transport to just send the items out into another chest. If we wanted to do that, of course. Uh, but what we can do is actually set up something here. There we go. What we do here is we used a mechanical belt here and here. And I am correct. Oh, whoops. And if we just triple down on the gears. Oh, yeah, nope not the way to go, but... Uh, maybe if I do a big gear then? I don't know. A uh, big gear... If we do a big gear here, that's not gonna work, so... Oh yeah, if we do a big gear and three small gears, that should turn it the right direction. Yep, there we go. And because we don't need to uh, get specific with this, we can actually make this work. Because at that point, we can then use a gear here, then get a big gear on this side, I suppose. 
yeah, if we go big gear here, uh, small gear here, to a small gear. There we go. You know, actually, now that I think about it, couldn't I follow the same... Wait. I might have just shortened the uh, design just a smidgen, actually, now that I think about it. Of course, I'm going to still need to set up the uh, gear shift, but I can actually time it on the same rotation, couldn't I? Oh, that's a very interesting prospect now I think about it. Ooh, this could work. Hold on. I will need another redstone link, but if I do this right, then I could just work this off one mechanism, couldn't I? Ooh, that's interesting. Okay. This might work. Hold on. I will have to uh, line it up properly, but if I do it right, then it should work. Okay, I just need to set up the gantry carriage situation again, using the normal method I have here. I should be able to time it. Okay. Uh, let's get a redstone link once we've gone to bed, that is. Uh, we should probably also fill the pa carrot patch as well, so we'll do that real quick. Toss the carrot. And we should be farming in no time. If I am uh, right on my uh, prediction, essentially. Alright. We have now rest rested. All right, gear shift. All right, gear shift requires a andesite casing to redstone. I, we actually don't have any andesite casing anymore, but that's easily adjusted because we've actually got a lot of wood now that I think about it. Got some apples among the mixture. So we should be able to easily make a ton of what we're looking for. Alright, should do it. Put the red stocked up. On wood, so we should probably get that fixed at some point. Anyways, get a gear shift. We're going to need another redstone link. Okay, two brass sheets, redstone torch, planks. It's easy enough. I'm gonna go with one plank here. Uh, I've got two brass, thankfully, and we can easily provide the redstone. Okay, we just press these two down. We're probably going to need to make a ton of uh, brass in the future, but it should be fine for now. Okay. Now we just need the redstone torch. Oh. Real quick. Okay, we've got redstone torches there, but I'd rather not use them if I can help it. Eh, bugger it, we'll just use a stick here. Make a torch as we can. There we go. For a redstone link, there we go. And I might be able to actually make this a three-way farm if the uh, things work out as intended. In which case, I guess we got uh, three crops to look forward to. Uh, in which case, I am probably going to be doing some movements anyways. Like, I'm going to move this over to the middle farm. And then just set up a three-way grid, essentially. At least that's the plan. For what I uh, have planned currently, anyways. Okay, first we set off the gear shift here. Uh, let's see. Uh, 
Is that faster than this? Yes, it is. Okay, so I'm probably actually going to need to... I might have to turn this speed... Okay. Okay, we're going to do a small... I think it's a big... Then I need to do a small... Here. Okay, that's relatively the pace we're looking for. They're big here. Oh no, that's not gonna work. Okay, if we set the uh, big one here to be big. There we go. Okay, so that's going to go to speed of that thing. There's a small cog here, I think. Uh, no, that's not going to work. Okay, it's a bit too far. Okay. Okay, that's going to be... Hmm. Okay, so if we do this, that's going to set to the same speed. We want to do the same thing that we did with... Yeah, no, we need to basically do the same thing that we did here. So... If I do it three cogs, do a big cog on the corner here, and then I do all cogs, that should work as intended. There we go. Now is it going to run away is the question. Okay, it's a... Uh, Okay, they're both rotating right. Yep. Take a redstone link here. There we go. We take out the wheat seeds in our trash bin. Mark them off like so. Make this a receiver. Then it's going to connect up with this machine and we'll toggle as appropriate. Uh, what I'm probably going to be doing is I'm probably going to make this like a three by th uh, three way farm essentially. Make this uh, an enclosed space. And make it look nice somehow. I'm not sure how specifically but I'll make it look nice somehow. Maybe I'll put some uh, stairs and slabs to uh, cover up the gantry shafts appearance. Because I could easily do a stair thing here and just make it look nice that way. It's not too hard. But yeah, no, I just need to du duplicate the mechanical harvesters. You know what? No, I'm actually going to, uh... I'm going to move in the middle, but first I'd like to set up the uh, dark oak, the portable storage interfaces, and all that jazz. But we're going to keep with the redstone contacts, I like that idea, but we are going to be changing it a little bit. Otherwise, I think we are in the clear for the most part, for uh, what we want to do here. So what's probably going to happen is we're going to have the middle one be a bit longer, and we will have them focused into the ground instead. So that way, one side will contact this side for the ground, and that side will contact the other. We'll make it stone or something uh, all the way through beyond that. Yeah, I've got big plans with this place, so my hope is that we can make it happen. But first, gantry carriage. Uh, gantry carriage, we're also going to need a portable storage interface. 
some dark oak, and a chest. Alright, that should be easy enough to make though. Okay. Oh, we're also going to need harvesters as well. Okay, gantry is pretty easy to make. I just need some oak planks, or twilight I guess in this case. There we go. One gantry carriage. We are going to need... What is it? We're going to need two things. Yes, we're going to need the harvesters and the portable storage interface. Okay, portable storage interface. That's going to require a brass casing and an andesite funnel, though. For just one of them, mind you. Okay, for that, then, we're going to need more brass. Or we can go with the brass casing we already got. Just need two... We've already got the funnels on us, thankfully, so that's cool. We are going to need dark oak with 13. That should be enough for what we're looking for. We are also going to need... what else? Hmm. I don't know. Oh, right, harvesters. My bad. And we're going to need a few of these, so let's see. Going to get the iron out for now. Got some iron ore that we can put in the processor, so we might as well do that. Nice, that's a lot of stuff. <laughs> Ton of uh, material here, actually. Put the iron back. Honestly, I think it's time that we can actually start just doing this. Just set up a whole 64 stack on without too much worry. We can get some sleep while we're at it, so that's nice. Uh, we also got the bench saw if we ever need specific blocks, but I don't think we're going to need those. Okay. Yeah, we'll just put a th one quarter of a stack. Why not? It's a bit slow. All right. I'm gonna take the copper and zinc. Uh, we're gonna get half a stack over here, I suppose, and the rest. Is yeah, we're gonna get the rest there. There we go. Nice. And while we wait, we are going to... Yeah, we'll take that. I'm actually going to need a block to place up here, just so we can stand up if we need it. Put this here, I suppose. There we go. This will make things easier for just putting it in. And for dealing with this, we've got plenty of charcoal here. Why not? There you go. Should probably use stone here. Okay, but yeah, that's 16 plates. That should be enough for... Uh, that should be enough for 8. Okay. Need one more then. So we'll get two more plates set up. And we should be good with the presses. Here we go. Alright, good job, Blaze Burner. Thank you. And now. And we've got nine harvesters. Perfect. Alright. Oh, hello, zombie. Where were you? Underground, probably. That's not good. <laughs> okay. 
we get ourselves our axe here, just to get rid of that. There we go. It's gonna look a bit wonky, but that's fine. Honestly, I probably could just connect this entire machine together and just have it run on one system, but... I kind of like the idea of it just being connected like this in some way. It It's weirdly therapeutic. Well, not therapeutic, but... It's weirdly nice. I like it, actually. <laughs> okay, so with that out of the way then, what we can do is set up the machine. Oh, right, we're actually going to have to glue it, don't we? So that sucks. Okay. Uh, that's another pillager group trying to uh, just bumble around. Interesting. They're probably checking this area to see if uh, me or a villager are around. Makes sense, it's quite noticeable industrial. No villagers here though, so... Kind of a worthless uh, mission that they're doing. I forgot I have glue in here. Oh well. Okay. For now I just want it to stick to this one, so... Should be fine as is. Alright, there we go. That should do it. Now, if I set the gantry carriage on here, it should stick to this side. Uh, not exactly what I want it on the bottom facing down. Here we go. Now we set up the... Well, first we glue this up. So that way it doesn't... And set up the portable storage interface right here. Like so. We set this one over here. There we go. So now it's connected to a degree. Now we just set up a chest. We should have plenty in here. Yep. Just get one out of there. There we go. Out. Plop that on here. Set up the chest. And we should be good to go. We just need to set up the mechanical harvesters. Alright. Do they need glue or uh, am I fine? Let's check. Uh, no, they actually need glue. Okay, so just connect these on. Alright, that should be it then. So, all we need to do now is literally just turn the machine on. We'll take off this bit of glue here. There we go, to make it look nice. Anything on the back we need to add? Not really. Nope, this is good. Okay. In that case, all we need to do now is... Turn it on. And that requires us to activate this, which requires a redstone link here. And I do believe that that turns it on there, meaning, yeah, so we need wheat and seed. Easily acquirable. We just get a wheat here. Use the seed, and we good. Yep, all of the stuff is coming pouring out. Okay. We are going to definitely need some sort of storage here. Uh, we don't actually have any storage, do we? Nuts, okay. Yeah, we'll just use the dirt there. There we go. That should do it. Ah, uh, 
where'd the other one go? Oh, it's over there already. Oh, okay. Ah, right. It's on a timer tick. So it's actually going together, technically. Well, that's cool. Alright, but that's it. That's the, uh... That's essentially what we do. We just have it on a repeat system, and it's basically good to go. And honestly, I think it's a good thing to actually turn this off, so... Let's just take that off. There we go. Now it's going to lock into place, and we don't need to worry about it anymore. I could also make it on a lever, couldn't I? But I digress. We are going to need to find a way to empty it at some point. That is the key thing here. Okay. That wheat away. Kind of just going to dump the wheat seeds. And... That should do it. Just dump the rest. And... There Alright, but we'll let that grow, which should be fine on the And honestly, I think it's high time we change the system now, at this rate. Because if we're going to be making another farm here, we're going to need to set it up to do the same exact thing. Mind you, I'm going to need to see if it's going to work or not, but... I mean, it should work. It's just one mill... And worst case, if it doesn't, we can just power it by two. And I'd say that's, you know, fantastic. Alright. Alright, time to disarm this thing. Now. Here we go. Tidy tidy. We keep most of the machine intact. That is going to remain the same. This. Although, now that I think about it, we're going to need to keep the uh, shaft in. to be finding a use. Just not in the way expected. Take that. Take this. But we do place the shaft here and here. We will now need to move out of the way here. Get back into the house to rest, namely. There we go. Okay, with that rest, this away real quick. Uh, we are going to one of our two buckets. We'll put the other bucket away, so that way we don't have too much inventory stacking up. Yep, zombies are still moaning and groaning, naturally. Grab everything here, because it seemed like it was uh, being left out. That's a lot of bloody potatoes. I should probably uh, turn those into something, shouldn't I? Oh well. We've just got so much inventory that it doesn't really matter, to be honest. I'm not too concerned about it anyways. Okay, but anyways. Right, we're going to use one mechanical belt. We're going to connect that off to here. That is going to transport items to this belt, which is actually going to be connected to another belt directed over this direction specifically. There we go. This belt, on the other hand, is going to be pushing out to here. And we're going to have this connect to here, like so. 
We're going to have this belt connect into a uh, funnel, which is going to pour into a diamond chest, I think. And we will have a nice little setup here that it's going to... Well, it's basically going to extend out, so it's not going to matter what we do here. We just need to make sure the rotations are right, essentially. But the power is going to be received somewhere uh, along this, you know, little uniform wall we got. This is going to lead into a chest. This is going to have a wall on the outside, I think. We should be good, basically. Of course, we're going to have to change the uh, design that we got here, but... For a little barn that uh, pr produces crops, that's not a bad thing. At least I don't think. It will take time to funnel, is the only issue, but... With how much uh, crops are coming in, I don't think we need to worry about that too much. Plus, when we do automate it eventually, it's just going to go underground. And it's going to go into a barn, so... That's another thing to keep in mind. But I digress. Let's see. I guess we move this over to the side here, so that's going to be a given. Okay. I'm going to take this powered latch. We face it this direction. Okay, we get three redstone links. One being a signal, one being a receiver. This is the signal for it. Take out the seeds, put these ones in the trash. Wheat out. Alright, this one is wheat, I do believe. Double wheat. This one is wheat seeds. Or this is we There we go. Those are receivers, so whenever this triggers, basically it goes off. We are now going to take off these redstone contacts. And we are going to replace this with dark oak specifically. Here we go. Oh, right. Grab those. There we go. Now we take this. Cool, cool, okay. Alright, so in order for this to turn... Well, first let's get the wood here. There we go. Dark oak. I'm fine with it just being exposed like that because, well, it's fine. They're basically going to be uh, going the same direction anyways, so it should... Although I could make it so it's uh, actually staircase here instead, specifically. That actually might be good for this end here. Uh, no, let's stick to this, but we'll have staircases on this side. So that way it's slowly going side to side. There we go. That's an idea. Okay. Quickly grab the stair... Or not canopy, we want dark oak stairs, specifically. We are completely smack dag... Stack smack dab low. Okay, we're gonna start with a veggie burger. Top us off. Here we go. Let us go get some more wood then. We are going to get the... I think it's this contraption, but I'll double check to be sure as we get some rail out. Yep. Bing a boom. Okay, we're going to need three rails for this. Let's grab the bunch, and we'll put the rest... I roughly got the uh, idea that we need, so... Of what we need, anyways. 
Okay, we'll put the stone can go away. Away, dirt can go up because we're gonna need to save that for later. Charcoal's fine. Well, no, charcoal can go. In. I guess burn. Okay. There we go. Alright, that's a stack of 64 brass. That's nice. Okay, but not necessary. Put that away for now. And we'll put the seeds in here for now. We are obviously going to need to ditch a bunch of seeds because they're just clogging up the inventory. We only need like a stack, give or take. And that's not even like a full blown thing that we need. But for now, let's start chopping up the forest again. Let's start getting uh, more supply. Okay. Take out the axe. There we go. Push. There we go. If you haven't seen this little mechanism, uh, just to give you a rough idea, because I've already explained it before, but it's a very simple system. It's just three saws, three chests on top, and it's basically made using the system. It's a very simple system, but basically what you do is you just push it, and it will uh, mine for you. The faster you uh, connect it to the uh, system, or the faster you move it, the uh, essentially. So if you do five like this, and you push it fast enough, it'll uh, go fast. But it's a great way to get bunches of trees if you need it. Uh, powered minecarts usually do uh, make it go faster though, so if I were to go about it the lazy man approach and literally take everything off my bar though, add two more materials to it, such as the redstone torch and instead use powered minecarts, it basically makes it way faster. Which I can do and show, I suppose. So I'll get some redstone torches. And we do have some powered minecart rails, so I'll use those. It should be faster anyways. Let's see. There we go. Oh, so it is. It actually took out two trees. Nice. I might actually have to do this just to be quicker, quicker about it. Oh, whoops. Push. And there we go. Yeah, that's pretty easy. There we go. We'll just demolish some of the forest and we're good. Okay. Uh, we're just gonna go to bed now. Uh, it's been quite a bit. But we should be able to rest without too much hassle. But yeah, wood has been relatively easy to make, or grab because of this machine, so... It doesn't replant, is the only issue, but... Considering we have an entire grove, or forest, of uh, dark oak... I'm not too concerned, to be honest. Rather, I could see easily mining this away just to see what's going on here is going to be better than just leaving all the trees here. Okay. Push. 
Here we go. To get it, uh, all you need to do is place down the cart assembler and disassemble the machine. So that way you can collect. Much like you do with the, um... Much like you do with the miner that I've got. There we go. Push. There we go. There we go. Okay. Alright, nothing's chasing me. Kind of worried about that at some times. Because this is still a dark oak forest after all. And mobs tend to spawn here. I don't want I don't want to be caught un unawares essentially. Okay. Cool. There we go. Push. And there we go. Nice. This is really, you know, therapy. It is really nice, I must admit. Then again, I've always been a fan of Minecraft. It's. I mean, well, a lot of people have been a fan of Minecraft. So it's really nice to just play and just enjoy casually. Mm, who knows? Maybe I'll bring up another series sometime. <laughs> but yeah, doing it this way, it's nice. It's nice. But as we're going along with this, um, I do believe I know what I want to do. Or at least that's, I know what I'm planning on doing anyways for uh, the f Tuesdays and Fridays from now on. So I won't be doing Dwarf Fortress as I've already said, naturally. Uh, I've been thinking about it for a while now. And I think I'm just going to go the Goblin difficulty. I, I'm confident I want to do that. I've been putting it off mainly because I wasn't sure if I wanted to do it, and I wanted to pursue other games before I did it. But considering everything that I have so far, I think it might be entertaining to do something a bit di more difficult. It's been a while since I've done a Souls game, after all. And the next closest thing would obviously be the difficulty on Goblin difficulty. Because it's basically one hit and you're done. Fairly, fairly self-explanatory, plus I like stealth games, so that's nice. Okay, we're almost done. I just like to get a few more trees in, and then we're good. Probably these two when we're good. There we go. Okay, push. Alright, and this should be the... we'll make... we'll make these two be the last trees. Let's go with that. And then we'll probably try and get all of these individually, because why not? Well, I shouldn't need to, anyways. Okay, like so. There we go. And almost done. Uh, do I want mulberries? Honestly, I'm really tempted to. Actually, what I can do is, uh... Yeah, what if, what if I can, uh... I can technically do this. I can't turn these cart cart tracks. Interesting. That's uh really interesting to know. I didn't know that I could uh, not turn this. Okay, well for now I guess. 
Oh. I also need to hit the middle tree, apparently. Not the side. Okay, new flaws I'm realizing with this machine. I can't target the sides when I'm doing it. Intriguing. Well, it's not a bad thing. It just means I have to target the machine itself. Or I have to target the tree itself. As a result. Okay, but that's that, I think. We got some palm tree. We got the majority of uh, dark oak as well. Actually, I might want to grab this one as well while I'm at it. So I'm going to do that real quick. Let's grab some dirt so we can make it possible. Okay. There we go. And push. There we go. There we go. Now we've got... We've slowly been clearing out the materials here. It's not completely devastated the forest either, so... It's just clearing out the area slowly but surely. And who knows, by the end of it, we probably are going to get rid of the entire forest, but... <laughs> It depends how much Dark Oak I use. Uh, it's probably going to be a lot so far, considering the circumstances of me using so much, but... Eh, it's not that bad. At least I don't think. For now, though, we get the rail here. We will plop it down, the machine. And to show you, all you gotta do is set down the car assembler on the track itself. There's a little sliver or bar if you can place it there. Do that. And it will set the machine back into place. And for a resulting materials checkup, we've got dark oak. Enough. Seems to be the same. Okay, we set oak there. There, there we go. And your apples can go there as well. And here as well, because it's obviously going to be sticks. But we do have a plethora of dark oak now, so wood troubles not a problem. I could also just grow these into dark oak, couldn't I? I'm just worried that the spruce is going to hit. Which is not going to work well. I should be fine, though. It's not like I'm mining these trees specifically for dark oak, after all. Although I suppose I could, as a passive growth. But, eh. It's not that big a deal. Okay, let's grab the material here. Nice. Ton of brass. That makes two stacks of brass, which is going to help with machining really well. Okay, let's start gathering, gathering materials for this. Okay, we're going to need to get the usual. And I'll put... Okay, actually, I could store all the dark oak in my bag, couldn't I? Like... There we go. Oh, so, cool. All right, what we're we gonna need? We're going to need the stock contacts, obviously. We're gonna need the shafts. We're gonna need the Hog wheels of both variety. We're going to need a water wheel. We're going to get the last mechanical belt here. Uh, we don't need the plows. We will get the redstone links. Uh, we need the... Do we need anti-side casing? Not for this build. Hmm. Do we need anything else beyond that? No, because everything's set up in position. 
should we cook anything else? Or should we eat anything? Or eat anything, rather. I think the biggest thing is... Here, we only need three stacks of each. One stack of seeds. And we're just gonna ditch the rest, I think. There we go. Are also included in that. But we're just gonna ditch most of the crops here. Have a three stacks uh, limit for produce. Crops are one stack. That should limit ourselves quite nicely. Uh, quinoas are three crops, so we don't change that. And we should be good. Yeah, quinoas are uh, specifically one crop, and they don't actually turn into anything too special. Now, with that out of the way, I guess we just build the mechanism. Or, build the mechanism, yeah. Ah, creepers. Lovely. I should probably get on those before they destroy my house. Okay. Come here, then. All right, cool. Okay, that's one. Well, basically two, anyways. Uh, now we just get everything set. Uh, we're going to dark oak, obviously. Uh, no, we do it to sideways here. It's on the third slot, or fourth slot, there. There we go. Sideways, like so. Because we only need those two. We are going to make a indent here. For the redstone contact. And we're actually going to dig two down here. Or three down for place. This is going to be a two wheat. Oh, this is a potato. We just toss that, I guess. There we go. We just need to get one wheat and one wheat seed in. We need to double wheat system. There we go. That is the double wheat connection. Just get the dirt. And we'll temporarily cover that, but we are definitely going to be using a different block on the floor. Probably going to be cobbles... well, not cobblestone, but we'll definitely be using some sort of brick, I think. Hmm. Is there any good... We could also use a wood type as well. There, There is that as well. I think I go for Scoria here, I think. Uh, there is Scoria. Uh, there's also Natural Scoria. Uh, oh, the biomes you'll go, Scoria. Hmm. Okay, so there's two types of Scoria, apparently. Not just a normal type. Okay. Uh, there's also Diorites, isn't there? Uh, there's Diorite Cobblestone. We got the normal Diorite, though. Okay, diorite. Diorite can be made into multiple things, uh, like panels. They can be apparently made into chairs. A quest book, even. 
if you want to go that far. Hmm. Okay. Cool, cool. Uh, we're also... Yeah, we're going to have to make this into a third system, I guess. That's how it's going to be. We are also going to need another one over this side here, I do believe. Okay, redstone contact here, there we go. We set up the redstone link here. This to be wheat and seed, specifically. There we go. That's going to be wheat and seed. So this is wheat, wheat, this is wheat and seed. Okay, cool. We do not want to set up the uh, redstone contact on this side, though. We definitely don't want that. So what we are going to do is we're going to set up a log right... A log right here. We're going to dig one down. And we are going to put some super glue on this side. Down a redstone contact. Like so. That'll face down. And it shouldn't be an issue. And when we're finally ready to place up the materials here, we should be fine. For now, though, we are going to have to start placing dirt in abundance to get ready for the third and final crop. Thankfully, we're going to get rid of some of the dirt, so we will be getting some value back because we are going to be use, utilizing this space as farming area. We just need to set it up. Okay, so we need one here, so... Gonna be a bit scuff, but we should be able to do it if we get the buckets for it. Okay, that's one. So one, two, three, four, block. And that should be it. Yep, there we go. And we are going to simply dirt along here, being the most important path here. There we go. Alright. Okay, cool. And like so, it's set. Now we just need to align it properly with the other two. Should be good. And then I can just start hoeing the ground. And we should be able to find a balance, I'm sure. Okay. This one should be on this corner here. So, one, two, three... Wait, hold on. One, two, three, four... Lock. Here we go. And just need one more water block because that will cover the rest of the crop. Okay. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Block. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Water. That's done and done. Now we just need to set everything up. Okay. And with this, there we go. We are going to have to dig down here just one step, so might as well get that just done, I suppose. Um Get some dark... Well, I guess we don't need dark oak specifically, but... We got plenty enough. It doesn't matter. Okay. Dig along. And we should be good. Yeah, there we go. 
Easy line. Okay, one, two, three, four. And we do it like so. And I guess we line it up like this, because we can. Oh, a bit too far, but otherwise, we've managed to get it down. Alright, and one final row. And that is all the dirt we need for three rows. Let's get the iron wood hoe. Start a uh, hoe in the ground, I suppose. Shouldn't be too hard to do. Quite easy, in fact. Here we go. This makes three rows. Like so. And that's another four. We'll do the middle row last. We should be good. Okay, I am worried about night time, but it shouldn't be that big a deal. I'm quite confident in uh, dealing with night time. Okay. There we go. And done. Okay, that makes uh, th our third plot of uh, farmland. We are going to have to uh, change the design of these dark oaks, so that is a given. But I'm kind of prepared for that, to be honest. In fact, I'm thinking of adding another chest and instead putting them on their sides. Which will allow us to actually get rid of some room on the gantry shafts. So that way we don't have to dig, you know, two blocks. Well, I guess we're still going to have to, but we won't have to open up this uh, little bit of a tidbit here. So that's good. We're going to chop these down here. Don't need to have them up, that's for sure. If we're going to be doing what I think we're going to be doing, or what I'm planning on doing, I should say. Okay. Okay. Was a good design to uh, begin with, but we're moving on now with our, you know, designs. So time to change it up. Time to make it different. Okay, here we go. We are going to want to remove the dirt here and just slowly start carving this place out a little bit. Every dirt will be missed, but it's going to be it's going to all be recycled and reused anyway, so yeah. That's gonna be nice. Uh inventory's doing perfectly fine, that's good. Shouldn't need to worry about it for the uh, long haul to begin with. Okay. Now there we go, almost there. Uh, just so you're aware, we are going to be removing uh, the blocks here as well. So that is not a worry too much. We're going to put glue on here. Just for the sake of beautification, we're going to have one... Well, not... We're not going to have it upside down, that's for sure. We're going to have it right side down, like so. Because these gantry carriages are going to go at the same time, roughly... We won't need to worry too much about them, you know, sticking and shifting, so... I will keep it like so, here. And the blocks should connect all the same. Okay, we are going to set up some... ...as well. We just need to do that. There we go. Drop that. Now all we need to do is place the redstone contact while this is glued, and it should move, essentially, so... This will be put on with super... Put the redstone contact... 
We do not put it in yet, though, because nothing is ready just yet. So, might as well get prepared for that. I'm gonna have to glue all these pieces together, actually, so I should probably do that while I have the chance. Ho, oh, there we go. Super glue, oak. Super glue, oak. And rinse and repeat. There we go. We are going to be moving this chest over to the side. Okay, that's a lot. Okay, I wasn't expecting a funnel of items. That's fine. Okay. Ah, there we go. Nice. We managed to get the chest. Okay, there we go. Set up the chest right here. Oh, I should probably actually pick it up and get the glue down first before I do so. There we go. Now we... Cool. Get rid of that. Glue this side. And we get another chest in. In fact, I should probably get some... Get two chests out just in case. Okay, place that there. There we go. Those are going to be our two chests that are going to store materials. We'll glue this up, place that there. I think we just dropped the wheat seeds. those cabbages in there. I'll put the cabbage seeds in here. There we go. There we go. Take that. I guess I'll put the wheat and the wheat seed away for now. There we go. Thing. And two should be good. Perfect. Alright. Chop this down. That gets us a new chest. Destroy the plug there. Then we go with the chest. Uh, probably the wrong position. Yeah, let's just stick it down there. There we go. That'll do. Alright, that's wheat, wheat seeds. We got way too much seeds, it seems. So, yeah, we're gonna definitely have to uh, find a filter to turn the wheat seeds into something else. Probably just dirt, I think. Hmm. I wonder if I can actually take the seeds off there. Hmm. I don't know. Okay, okay. Uh, right. We also need to deal with you, but we should be fine for now. Alright. As for what design we go with, I don't know. Hmm. First, let's decide what crop we're going to grow on this. We've got... We've got cabbage, we've got onions. In fact, I'm going to cabbage and onion things. Cabbage. There we go. That's three stacks. Onions are... There we go. There we go. What else? We've got tomatoes, and our tomato stack is nothing here. Okay. Get two tomatoes. Oh. There we go, that's three stacks of tomatoes, carrots, potatoes, uh, lettuce, corn, wheat. There's, there's a lot of stacks, basically, and there's also onions, but I digress. Okay, so we got three stacks of those. What else do we want to grow? Go for the sweet potatoes. 
We have a lot already, but it never hurts to have another crop of something. And let's actually get the seeds out specifically. We want the Alright. Alright, we're gonna have a full stack of sweet potatoes. So that's the other you know, another thing. From the simple farming it's uh instruction well, not instruction, but Simple farming mod pack, or simply mod words. Simply farming mod pack. Here we go. That is one stack of sweet potatoes. I also go for the soybeans, because they are actually a very big staple crop to have. In fact, I'm going to have the soybeans we already have them into soybean uh, seeds because I would very much like soybeans as a staple so that way we can make some more uh, veggie options if we ever want to there we go what else do we have that we can make because this will be the last crop of this row ah uh, Quinoa seeds, while they are nice, are not worthwhile in my opinion, so we won't be ma making those into a crop. Uh, there is squashes, there's strawberries. Could strawberries grow here? No, they cannot. Okay. Uh, torchberries is not, mm, not warranted enough. Let's see. I think squash is honestly the simplest option, but corn is also an option. Do we go corn or squash? Alright, what does a uh, squash make? Oh, squashes actually make melon type farms. Ooh, that's actually. Hmm, that might be troublesome to make, actually. Okay, um. I'm probably not gonna make squashes because they make, uh. They make literal pumpkin based seeds, which is not good. I guess it makes sense because they look like squash seeds, don't they? Hmm. Uh, we've got pea seeds, so that's an option. Soybean is not the way. Uh, we did get a broccoli seed as well, so that's an option. You know what? I got a better option. Cucumber. Cucumber is probably going to be the way to go, I think. It's an odd crop, I know, but it has versatility, is the big thing. Just not sure if it's going to grow as... Ended, but I guess we'll see, won't we? We're definitely gonna get, we're definitely gonna get cucumber though. I think that's gonna be the go-to because I do believe cucumbers are versatile in uh, crop growth and crop farming. So better to get that than anything else. We'll just let those crops grow, and if we can, we'll try and uh, get those crops to be a plentiful amount. In fact, I might actually try. yield to some degree in some of these crops anyways uh melons are fine mushrooms we already have a mushroom forest so that is probably where we're gonna grow them okay we will get the pea seeds now there we go that should do it the peas will grow like normal, as will the broccoli, I hope, anyways. And we'll just let those uh, grow on their own. By the time we are done, should make for a lovely crop growth. Okay, right. I should probably also set up the glue here for the chests. Get the chests themselves out while I'm at it. Okay, one chest here, one here. Okay, we are going to need 
two more portable storage interfaces. And we're also going to need to set up some flooring, I do believe. As for what we go for flooring, I'm not entirely certain, but... I think to be honest. I, I very much want a marble thing here. We are going to go for... Let's see. Something nice on the top would be good. Uh, polished is tempting. Uh, let's see. Quark has polished diorite. Whereas... There's overgrown diorite, mossy diorite. We could go layered. Let's see how that... We could also change it into something else. Well, not something else, but we're going to try fancy diorite brick, I think. Yeah, that'll do. I think it's good enough. Okay. Yeah, this should, this should work perfectly fine. I'm quite satisfied with it. There we go. Okay. We're going to want these on the floor, and I guess we're going to need a lot more diorite, but I'm a fan of the design so far, and I think I can make this work. Yeah. Alright, I've decided it's going to be a bunch of diorite here that we're going to be using. Diorite, but... We will definitely be using as much diorite as we can. I Might as well, right? Okay. There we are. Build along here. And there we are. I will have to uh, organize some of the, you know, blocks as we go along, but it's not a rush to do so. Just yet, anyways. Okay. Just slowly build towards here. Like so. And build back. Nice. Place that there. There we go. Now, we don't necessarily need to put die right here, but I'm going to be doing it for the aesthetic reasons anyways. So, we'll be doing that later. For now, though, we just need to finish off this row here. And worst case, if we run out of diorite, yeah, it's fine. I'm not too worried. Alright. Just line it up here. Like so. Done. Okay. If we ever need more diorite, we have it. But the only thing I would ever need it for is to just change up the design somewhat here. If I ever need to, anyways. Alright. I think the biggest thing I want to do is set up the barn itself here. Okay. Like that. And I might as well make it five blocks high. Because why not? Here we go. So that's going to be the specifications for how we get it to its position. As for how we address, you know, this entrance here, we're probably going to set up like a door or something as we're going along. But we shouldn't need to uh, worry too much about that. As for dirt, we're going to just set that up now while we're at it. 
Okay. We've got about a... One, two... Okay, so it's a three block high on the middle. So we just need two blocks out here. Like so. Just quickly do this, because we can. There we go. Alright. Now, how am I going to do the inside of the building? I guess we'll see how it goes, but I'm probably going to be placing dark oak on the middle, or I'll probably be placing stairs. One of the two. Alright, that's four. That's five. Okay. Now I can either keep it upright, or we could go sideways. I feel design-wise it would be nice sideways and it'd be easier to place, but I think upwards is just a way to go from now on. If I had a builder one, that would be really nice right now, to be honest. Actually, is there? Uh, let's see. Wand of Symmetry. What is the Wand of Symmetry? Okay, so, something I could probably not get just yet, so. Uh, Wanderer's Boots. Hmm. Interesting. Well, thank you. ...be a problem regardless. But yeah, this is going to be a lot of wood that I'm going to be expending here. Okay. For this, we're going to want to have a door here, I guess. So we are going to shovel this up. Place a log there. And start building up, I suppose. go. Okay. That's three. And this is five. Alright. This is a lot of wood that we're using, but whatever. <laughs> For the sake of beauty, I'm sacrificing a lot of wood. And what we're probably going to be doing on the top here is we're going to probably put in slabs so that we, it makes it look a bit nicer. But we will be using stairs across the board here. Uh, do I want to use the normal stairs or do I want to use some actual other stairs? Hmm. I think I like the dark oak sy symmetry that I've got going on. Although I could do brick, couldn't I? Hmm. I'll give it some thought. How about that? Yeah, I'll give it some thought on the design. I'm probably going to swap over to something a bit different, just so I can uh, keep it, you know, a bit unique to some degree. Maybe, like, go with an outline of some sort of... You know what? Actually, yeah, that actually sounds like a good idea. An outline of a diorite, actually, would be nice. Now that I think about it. What I can do here is... Do two blocks up. That way it looks a bit nicer this way. 
I won't be able to cross into this section, mind you, but that's fine. As long as we can go in, we should be fine. But yeah, we'll have two blocks here. And we'll just have a... I guess we could have it be a low-hanging uh, block here, actually, now that I think about it. Hmm. And it's another thing that I have to think about. But anyways. Dark oak. Dark oak. And now we just chop up this just a little bit. So that way we can actually make it fit. Shouldn't be too hard to clear up this. To some degree anyways. We just need to go around basically. In fact, I could just need to get rid of these uh, oak stairs, don't I? And then I should be good. Two, three. Four. Five. There we go. Oh, I just did it right, actually. In a size comparison, yeah. I did it really right, actually. <laughs> okay, we're gonna chop these stairs now. There we go. And we go up. There we go. Okay, a bit too far. That's fine. Okay, chop the stairs here. Nice. Alright, cool. That's another row done. And... like so. Nice. Okay. Alright, this will be three, this will be four, and the rest will be five. Five, 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 five. There we go. Then we do another two to this row, and we should be good. there. Well, we're definitely going to need glass, I think, so that is going to be a obvious change to our design now that I think about it. So we will need to address that as well. So glass is obviously going to be the staple design part of this, so we need to keep that in mind as we're going along. And yeah, we're going to need to set up the diorite stairs now, because that is one of the two things we need to address. Okay, hopefully we can get an e easy abundance of fancy diorite stairs, so that's good. We just need to set them up. Uh, we could go up a block. Yeah, let's go up a block. Why not? It'll be a bit of, an e uh, a bit of effort, but... I'd rather actually have this entire row be one block higher, for the sake of convenience. And I think it might actually be convenient for our uh, stairs as well. Now do I want to go higher here? Because I don't have to, because once I uh, hit this block then I can start putting glass. I'm gonna say no, because I do feel that the aesthetic would be ruined if I were to do it that way. Plus, we'll have a little bit of a lip there. There we go. Yeah, I just got hit shift as we're going along here. There we go. There we 
go. And we go down. Should be fine all the way through. Okay, we've ran out of wood, but that's easily the fact that we have so much of it. Okay. Okay, there we go. Alright. Now we just skirt our way over across. There we go. Nice. Now we just take the brick stairs here. Oh, whoops. Gather that. There we go. I'm probably actually going to make it on the side, I think. Oh, careful. Okay, if I hop here, there we go. Hmm. Now I can either do it on the side here, or I can do something else. Let's see. I very much want to do it this way. Okay, get the brick here, there we go. Okay, hmm. Right, for this side we have to do it a bit differently because we won't be able to see the uh, other side. We're going to turn those into dark oak planks, I suppose. While we change the layout of the flooring here. That would be preferable if I can help it. There we go. We're going to use dark oak here for the sake of just appearance, well, not for appearance at this point, but mainly just to see what's going on in the back room here, essentially. We'll probably have like some sort of door connection here or something, I'm not sure, but we'll figure something out for it, essentially, among other things, I should say. Okay. With that, we can just gather this. Ton of dirt to add to our collection, which is nice. Grab our buckets, grab the water that's been placed in here. So that way we may set ourselves up. Like so. Get rid of all the dirt on the floor here. Or at least plank it up. Nice. Dark oak's looking pretty nice for appearances. I will need to remove the dirt here a little bit, but... Apologies. Uh, should be fine all the same. Okay. Get that dirt real quick. That way we can just set the system on some wood now. Just make it look nice, essentially. Okay. Okay, if power latch needs to go there, naturally. Grab the dirt. Okay, place the redstone links down. Like so. We need the wheat and seeds again. There we go. Double wheat here. Alright, wheat and seed. And double seeds here. Receivers. There we go. I guess I could take out the spruce, couldn't I? But I probably should use my machine instead, just to be safe. Anyways, that is a concern for another time, though. 
what we do is we use a... Well, we already got the shaft here, actually, so that's fine. Okay, what we do then is we get the fancy diorite uh, brick stairs. Connect them like so. And we want them to connect up to here. And now we just use this in combination with the dark oak stairs here, like so. And slab up the rest of the area. Isn't that right? There we go. Well, maybe not this far, but we'll slab, we'll make slabs out the rest, I'm sure. Okay, bit too much, but that's fine. We can easily make some more when we get into the house, which will give us a reason to rest, which will give us another reason to get ready for other stuff, like building, well, mainly building. But yeah, it seems like it's just going to be a building stream for the most part, just decorating and revamping the uh, auto farm. <laughs> But hey, once it's, you know, resettled and everything, it should be fine. I'm probably going to have to get rid of this uh, balcony thing. It, it it does suck that we have to get rid of it, though, but it doesn't look that great, does it? Yeah, we're not going to be using that to uh, get around, I think. Got a bit of a ghetto-looking area here, admittedly. Okay, we are going to get some... Wood stairs. Oh, hi. Good day to you, sir. Well, good thing you can't get through because it's just slightly too big for him. <laughs> We're gonna get the. Here we go. Guess oak. Okay, we'll toss the... Alright, we're running low on wood, but we should be fine, I think. Okay, get the wood. Should only need one block right here. Oh, hello. Let's deal with you real quick. There we go. Okay. Like so. Here we go. For the stairs, I suppose... Well, yeah, we're going to start with the stairs. Uh, we don't need it one higher there, but we will just go that way. There we go. And this is going to be difficult, but it needs to be done.
There we go. We are obviously going to need to set the inside a little bit, but... Should be fine. Okay, fancy brick stairs going up. Or diorite stairs. Now we just set up the setup for here. Alright. That's about all we can do. And we can just barely jump up, which is a convenient thing that we can do. Which is nice. Okay. We can only go as far as two here before we're stopped. Uh, nope, not that. Okay. Nice. Uh, we did lose some of the stairs, but that's all right. Okay, we want to go two blocks out like so. There we go. We'll chop the brick, or the stairs here. Nice. We are going to need some glass now. And we will be setting it along the tops of the uh, glass here. But the rest are going to be inlaid with slabs, I do believe. Okay. Gonna be a 3x3 three three slabber. And we'll have a diorite lip for when it does come to it. Alright. Yeah, we're going to have hiccups like that, essentially. Alright, the stairs real quick so we can uh, set up that bit there. There we go. The slabs as so. Essentially. Okay, whoops, way too much. All right, and there we go. Nice, that's one side. Now we gotta do the other, naturally. We will have to be doing uh, diorite stair slabs as well, so that is gonna be, well, no, diorite, uh, Fancy diorite bricks uh, slabs. So we have to uh, keep that in mind as we are going along. But as long as we keep to that, we should be fine. Yeah, just. with the glass, but we're going to need a lot of glass for that in, in the first place before we can even consider it. Okay, that's one half. Now we go for the other, which...
bit weird to do. But hey, we managed to get the design going, so that's good. Now we just need to set up the glass and the rest of the diorites. Now, we don't have any diorites, as far as I'm aware, in our two specialty chests. So that is a... not a good thing. But there is a possibility that we have a plethora of diorite. Some diorites. A diorite stack here. There might be a proper stack as well in our inventory, but I'm not 100% sure. Okay, it seems we got the nether brick. We got the cobalt ingots as well, so that's nice. And we can turn cobalt into stuff, but I'm not sure what we're going to be doing it into. But we'll see. We'll see. For now, though, we did get the diorite that we need for the crafting purposes, so... Let us... And we are going to see what we need. Uh, it seems like we're going to need some more diorite stairs, though. That is a given. So what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to take 16 of the diorite. So that way we got a solid 6432. I think this should be enough. But if not, we'll have to figure out what we're going to do. Uh, we can actually do it on the floor here, actually. Why not? There we go. There we go. Uh, I did too much slabs and too little stairs. That is my mistake. Okay. Hop up. There we go. Alright, yep. Uh, too much slabs, too little stairs. Okay, that's one row, and I guess we do the other row, and I might be able to get away with uh, circling this with a fancy diorite as well. Consider, but sacrifice if I need it to be. Yeah, if I use die right here, then I can circle it around. It could work, essentially. But we're definitely going to have to indent the uh, glass in, I think. So, glass will go here, be indented inside. So, glass will start here and go from there. Shouldn't be too hard to make, though. But alas, for now, we should be good for now. This is as basic as it's going to come. And we should probably start setting up the machinery here. While we're at it, anyways. Okay, so let's see. Let's um, dark oak. Set it up like so. Set that like so, like so. There we go. Now it's going to look nice. Or at least somewhat nice. Okay, we want to drill a hole into here. We're going to have a hole here and here. This is going to have a machine in it, so we want to chop these and put them on their sides, I do believe. Yep, we place these on their sides and we're good. Okay, side... And this will be the same. There we go. That should look good enough. And we'll set the very top here at a side. So, first the bottom. There we go. Then the middle. 
and a tippy top. Cool. Yeah, now we just need to get the uh, original supplies like we did before. So we're going to need a, another gantry carriage. We're going to need more gantry shafts because this is not near enough, the requirement. We are going to need a shaft here. So we'll get two just set up. Take one away. Okay, get our oak log there. There we go. Okay. And I guess we can chop this because we don't need it as well. There we go. I'm probably also going to need to cut into another area here so that way we can uh, move in and out as we see fit. There we go. Like so. Now we have two entrances here. Uh, I'm thinking of having an entrance on the sides, but I'm not sure. I'll leave them open for now. In fact, I might actually make them wider. I'll make them a 3x3, three three, so that way I have reason to make them, you know, because I can. Okay, goes away for now. Okay, we're going to chop this. There we go. Just have a 3x3, three three. why not? That way we can uh, just have an enjoyable size of a gap to uh, go through with ease. And it'll look a bit nicer. Just a little bit, anyways. Okay. Okay, that's a 3x3, three three, but we need to chop these up to be a 4x4. Four four. Chop that. Done and done. Now we can go in without too much hassle. Nice. And if we ever want to go out, there's options here. So yeah, we've got pretty much good options if we want to go in and out. Without uh, trouble. Okay, what else is there? Obviously the glass is going to be needed. Uh, we're probably not going to get into the barn today, but that's to be expected. So, all we need is sand, which is, yet again, going to be a chore. Hmm. Kind of wish I had a tool for it, but I guess the mining tool is sort of going to work. But we'd have to specify sand uh, to make it more uh, as effective as possible, I suppose. Which I... Actually, that's actually a good idea. I could specify just only sand. But no. We've got bigger fish to fry currently, so... Alright, so we need two per farmer, so... So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. So we need 18 ingots compressed to make the uh, farmers that we need. We need a gantry carriage. Uh, that requires one brass casing, I do believe. Okay, we are missing the andesite casing and the wood. That can easily be done, though, if we just turn these into wood. There we go. Okay. Uh, let's get some andesite. We need the redstone. Yeah, we just need the andesite case. So we'll just get one andesite case. Okay, gantry carriage. Gantry shaft. We'll get 32 just to be... There we go. Get the rest just to be sure. Uh, how's these going? Oh, they're done. Perfect. Uh, let's put away the rest for now. There we go.
we shall get these portable storage, which is going to require andesite funnels, which is going to require seaweed. The oak planks away. Get the dried kelp out. Get... Let's get 16. Okay, we just need two of these funnels, specifically. And two... Oh, right, we need another brass casing, so... That there. Get one more brass casing. There we go. Got the dirt. Alright, so we got two portable storage interfaces. We got the gantry carriage. We've got the gantry shafts, which is going to be needed to transport the entire thing. We got a shaft... And we should be able to connect everything relatively easily. So I guess we just set things up now. Well, once we get the glue, of course, installed. But that's a given. Okay. Gantry carriage goes up top once we've actually set up the... Yeah, once we've set up the gantry shafts, that is. There we go. There we go. Alright. We set up the shaft. Oh, wait, no, the shaft. So, no need to worry about that. Uh, let us go and rest real quick. So that way we don't have to worry about mobs. I'm probably gonna have to light up that area soon, though. Because otherwise, if I don't, things are just going to get wacky. Shouldn't be too much of a trouble, though. Alright, let us set up the gantry carrier then. And we just need to connect up the pieces. Okay, we just get the glue here. Get the portable storage unit and face it the right way going to be facing this way, and we'll place the other one there. There we go. Now this machine should carry some items, this machine will carry some, and this will carry some. They move at different intervals, but they carry their own set stock of items, which should be about six stacks, essentially, of items. Now, of course, I'm going to need multiple of these silos. Well, I would... I guess, I guess I can call them silos. Uh, no, they're automatic. I don't know what they're called. I guess auto farms, yeah. We'll just call them auto farms just for the convenience sake. Uh, I'm going to have to remove that uh, little row, though, because we still do need to set up this area. Which is, in of its own, its own area, actually. Let us get a dirt row, I suppose, or a dirt column, and this will basically be where I store everything. And we'll have everything coming out of this, you know, system here, and we'll have a chest on the other side. And we should be good then, because we will be able to see the chest here quite easily. And, yeah, we should be good. Okay. Yep, there we go. That's gonna have to... We'll get the oak stairs, though, as a setup. go. And this area will essentially be, uh, it'll be its own area. Okay, but yeah, we're gonna get rid of the, 
fancy brick slabs now and set them up on the right direction. Okay. And done. Okay. With that then, I guess we just set up golden because this is uh, going to be a Okay. Yeah, we're going to set it up like this so that way the wood actually goes into the uh, chest that we're going to be placing here. And we just line it up like so. Okay, we've ran out of wood, but either or dirt in there, <laughs> and uh, we should be good. All right, let's deal with the spruce now. Get rid of it. And there it goes. Nice. All we do now is that. And honestly, I could probably just destroy this and it should be fine, but yeah, let's do it. Why not? Not like it's going to be in the way. Put the spruce away. There we go. And I guess get three. And we set but once we get the dark oak, anyways. There we go. Just destroy that and long, like so. Not that way. That way. There we go. And now we just go four by four to here. Okay, there we go. Nice. Okay, chop that down. Go up. Cool. And we just keep going. Keep trucking on. We're almost there. Done. Okay, cool. With that then, we we'll just take the dark oak stairs, finish off this little bit of an area. And yeah, we're basically golden. There we go. We are going to need to get up labs though again and plant more along here, but I actually want to prov uh, not do that just yet. At the very least, I want to get the slabs on this side done, but I don't want to go any further than that because if we do, then uh, mobs are going to start spawning in this machine, and we don't want that. We really don't want that if we can help it. Uh, but otherwise, I think I follow the same uh, principle as I did before on the back end here. Although, I'm going to make the doors much smaller for the sake of the uh, the machine itself. So, Alright. Now, we get the, oops, the fancy diorite brick slabs. I There we go, that'll be it. Now we just gotta finish the third farm, which shouldn't be too much hassle. I mean, 
it's quite easy if you think about it. We just need to set up the, uh, we just need to set up the machine really. That's all it comes down to now. Uh, that's as easy as putting a shaft down. We get the mechanical belt here connected. And we organize everything to where it's going to work. Okay, uh, to make it work, we're probably going to need two more gantry shafts here, like so. And we're going to place them there. And I might actually move this mechanism of just setting up the windmill or the mill and uh, making sure these things move as appropriately. Because I think if we do it the way I'm thinking of with these extra, you know, additions, we do it like so to where we have both carriages rotating in a specific direction. So we want these uh, cog wheels to rotate this way. And if that, yeah, if we provide rotational force that uh, this way, then these windmill, or these, uh, these, this one will go this way, while this one will go this way, I do believe. So that is the intent with this design. Now, I will need to set the windmill, or the uh, water mill, so I will be doing that right now. And I think I just do it literally in the corner here, I think. And I can make it uh, look actually nice. So, we take the water wheel here. Place it on the side here. Nice. Place it like this. Place one wood there, like so. There we go. Now we have the wheel set up. And we chop this. Like a bit of water here. Place it in. Place the log so it doesn't actually see. There we go. Nice. Now with that, we can get some andesite, turn it into shafts, and now we just need to get the rotational force going. Uh, we just need to make the rotational force big. So we want a large cog. Well actually, first let's... uh. Chop that first. We're going to put some torches in here temporarily so we can see what we're doing. Because I think we should... Well, no, let's play it safe and actually go out and uh, get back to the base. Let's play it safe. Of course, we're going to need to light up this area, so I will need to put some, uh, some stuff everywhere. Probably going to put in uh, lanterns on the bottom edges. That's what I'm thinking anyways. Plus it'll look a little nice. And we should be good. But yeah, for now, what we need to do is just get things ready. All right. First, we set up the shaft. That way we can get it into position. We're going to do a large cog wheel here into a small cog wheel. Which actually, if I do it right, then I can actually do it right here instead. Then we do a large cog wheel into this, into a smaller one, like so. Uh, it's probably already too fast, but... Okay, hmm. Hmm. Okay, what do we do? 
Well, obviously, if we can get this connection just going from this get-go, that's fine. We're going to try and get it to be a small cog, so we're going to go for that. A big cog go here, so that way we a smaller cog. Uh, no, the cog actually gets slower if I do that, doesn't it? We're going to do a small cog to here. And that gets the rotational force going. At a manageable pace, actually, now that I think about it. So if we do that, that gets it to a manageable pace. If we do a large gear here. No, no, if we want this to work, we want a large gear... Yeah, we get a large gear here, and then we do like so. Okay, hmm. Okay, well, let's see. This goes into a big gear, which goes into a small gear, which should go into a big gear. Uh, no, that doesn't work. Okay. Do two small gears, in which it will go into a big gear now. There we go. And then we can do a extended. And that'll speed it up like crazy, which actually might be a bit too fast for my... Let's see. If we go up and up... Well, no, if I go up one, this gear, then I move the axe for an so we can get the big gears in. If we go with a big gear now, uh, right here. No, no, that's not gonna. Hmm. Okay, if we go one gear here, we go big gear here. A small gear here. Well, no, that's the big gear here, then, shouldn't I? Yeah, if I go big gear there, then I can go small gear here. And just get into position like so. Now, I've got the worry that it's going to rotate the wrong direction, is the problem. So I gotta keep in mind that I've gotta rotate it the right direction first. Okay. Let's see how it works. Okay, nope, it's the right direction. So we want it to rotate a different direction if we can help it. So the easy Alright, so it's going the wrong direction currently, so if we want it to work in the right direction, we do a big cog here, I think. That's assuming I want it to go this fast. You know, I might actually be fine with... Let's go with that direction then. Okay, it's going the right direction as intended, okay. Now if we connect it like so, there we go. It's rotating the right direction. So we want it to rotate this way, basically. Oh, right. 
now that it's set there, we just need it to be set here as well. We should be good. Oh, it's actually going the wrong way here. Interesting. Okay, then I need to change this shift here. And then do the same here. I need to change the shifting somehow. Hmm. Well, I mean, there's an easy way to go about it, and I think about it. I just need to do it right, is the thing. Okay, we'll just toss this. There we go. Okay, we got it the right direction. Now we just need to change the polarity. And I do believe there's an easy way to go about that, it's just whether I can make it work or not. Hmm. Well, I guess we'll see, won't we? <laughs> Okay, it should be in here. Yep. Uh, not gearboxes. We want encased chain drives. Actually, I guess a gearbox would actually work as well. So I'll see if a gearbox can also work. If not, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. Okay. Let's hope this works. Worst case, I use the encased chain drive, and I figure out another option, but it's fine. Okay. Uh, in case chain drive. Okay, can I make it... Okay, no, the chain drive doesn't actually... It rotates, rotates it up, rather than to the side. Uh, let's see. Does the gearbox do anything here? if I rotate in the right position. Not. Yeah, so I just need to re reverse the polarity here, essentially. Hmm. This is quite a conundrum. If we take those out, because we don't need those two. Hmm. Okay, so this is going this way, so obviously this is going to work here. So if I chop... Well, first let's get rid of the pose to start with. Yeah, so we got this, so if I chop down this wood plank here... And I guess we'll ditch these wheat there, there we go. Okay, obviously if I go the route of placing a large cogwheel here, large cogwheel here, and then doing a small cogwheel, it's going to actually go the same direction. That isn't... We want it to go in inwards on itself. So the easiest way would be to do three cogwheels and do it that way. Yeah, because that reverses the polarity. Okay, what we want to do is basically the same thing here. Uh, but we want it to go the other direction, essentially. So, we go like this, go like this, we our mechanical belt back, like so. Okay, hmm. The big gear is not gonna work, obviously. Um...
I could... I could do a gearbox here, couldn't I? Okay, the gearbox is going to rotate it the wrong way, though, is the problem. So I have to keep that in mind. So, would uh, putting a gearbox here rotate it the right direction? No. So what's the difference between here and there? Yeah, so it's going the same direction regardless of this. Is it because the gearbox actually... Hmm, the gearbox... It sets a polarity, then. Okay. In that case... What would be the easiest way to go about this? Uh, cogwheel into cogwheel. You know, if I do a cogwheel into a cogwheel on the bottom here? Well, no, it has to be on the top, I think. I guess a cogwheel like this works. And then I get the, uh, shaft. Yeah, there we go. It just had to be the same. Ah, uh, right. We actually have to, uh, we have to reverse this as well into a big cog. I think about it. So we need this to be a big cog as we're doing this. Okay. Let's do a large cogwheel here, I suppose. We're going to need to get our wood back in place, I guess. There we go. Place the wood back. Alright, large cog. Okay, hmm. Okay, how are we going to do this? This really depends on a lot of stuff, doesn't it? Although, now I think about it, hold on. Wait. If I do this, the large cogwheel here, there we go. That worked. Okay. It was a bit of an awkward setup, but we managed to make it work. Nice. That just barely worked in our in our favor. And the best part is actually we can move this, couldn't we? Of course it would require more shafts, but it would do the job. Apparently we are out of food. Just drop those. And we'll just rush into the house. <laughs> Apparently thinking power with... Uh, Apparently it requires a lot of thinking power and a lot of food drumsticks just to think of these sorts of uh, things. Thankfully we can eat veggie burgers to sate our hunger, so that's good. And, better yet, we can probably get some more recipes as time goes on. Out. Okay, got some enchanted stuff, that's fine. Nice. Gonna burn a bit, but we should be good. There we go. Ironclad iron chest plate of tenacity. Hmm. It's actually pretty nice. Better than what we've got currently. It does have fire resistance too, though. So that's something also to consider, but yeah, I shouldn't need it. Okay. With that set, we need to... Okay, we need to small gear it up. And set it up to... A... Yeah, we need basically need to set this one up to a small gear. And we should be good. Although, now that I think about it, if we 
the way we did this is uh, making it much harder for us to actually get the gear off. So actually what we do here is oddly enough we do a small gear here. We then get the big gear. And we small gear it up again for a big gear here. And I guess we small gear it up here to get the speed that we're looking for. One, two, three, four. I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's the speed. Okay, so, yep, all we gotta do now is just make these two large gears here. And rotate them like so. And I think that's the pace we want, isn't it? Uh, it's just rotating the wrong direction. So we need to turn it the right as we're going along. Okay, if we go up a bit, then we can go like so. Right. In fact, if I go gear here, oh. let's go shaft, go big gear. I think that's the pace we want, and it's going the right direction, I think. I had it right the right other direction. That is my mistake. Okay. We want it rotating that way. Right. Okay. Man, this is getting difficult. <laughs> Alright. Big one. Uh, we go... I guess we go small one, even though we don't need it. Well, no, we need to... I think we need to go big one and then small one. Yeah, there we go. Uh, rotating... A bit too fast. We want it on the pace of the large cogwheels, if we can help it. No, it's actually at pace. We just need it to uh, stick to that pace, basically. Hmm. I'm gonna do this. a little bit and make this a big cogwheel into a small one into a small one into a big one like so that would get it up height enough or up to height we will need to speed it up though so that is something we will do so place the cog there then we do a double down like so once again Oh, but we won't be able to get it there now. Hmm. God, just so much finagling that we have to do just to get it to the right position, don't we? Although, there's an easy fix for this, I think. Yeah, I move this gear up. So we just use the shaft here. Small gear. We use the large cog... Well, yeah, large cog wheel to large cog wheel here. Is that fast enough, though? Okay, it's rotating the wrong direction is the problem here. Okay. We need to figure out how we're going to rotate it back now. 
<laughs> oh man. Man, this is difficult. <laughs> Okay, well, if I go large cogwheel to start with... Yeah, no, if I go cogwheel here... Okay, we need to go... Alright, so... Let's copy the... Temporarily. So, we need a small and big, naturally. Small and big like so. Then we get double small, like so. And then we just get a big one. Oh, that was easy. Yeah. We just replicate that design here. Then we get the gearbox, actually. And we can set the gearbox up here. Actually, let's turn that into a normal horizontal gearbox. And just set up the shafts like so, couldn't we? And now go the same direction as intended. Yep, there we go. In fact, couldn't I just... I need multiple gearboxes if I wanted to do that, now I think about it. You know, it might be cheaper to do it that way then. It'd save us a lot of uh, gears, wouldn't it? Of course I would need to still do this though, so that's something I... that's a given, so... Let's get a bunch of shafts going. Okay, in that case, I should probably actually do this then, and get the gearbox. Oh, we got two, somehow, okay. Pick this up. There we go. Oh, it's the wrong way. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, that's not something we want. Okay. So, if we wanted to do this right, then we'd have to reverse the polarity yet again. Interesting. But okay. Uh, let's see. If I... God, this is so difficult, but it has to be done unless I... Uh... Hmm. Okay, if I do it like that, and then I do a big gear like this, and small gear like so... A gearbox here... Not the right direction, though. Huh, this is so troublesome. <laughs> Although, I guess the easiest way is to reverse the polarity of the gear shift, isn't it? So that way, uh, the seeds are always on instead. the power outage here to actually change I should change it to well I need to turn that on if I wanted to reverse the polarity don't I so that's another thing I have to cover oh boy oh boy uh, this would get two so that's another two again. We want to get three, essentially, so... 
We want to get five gears going. Okay, so... I guess we... At least like so, there. Actually, would that work? It would only uh, require one, so we need to get odds, basically. Uh, this is vertical now. Uh, it would be going outwards, so no, it's not the right direction. Two in, a, in that case, so... Hmm... So it needs to be an even number, essentially, right? So one, two, three. Okay, so that's three. If I rotate it like this, that's one. That's two. Okay, that... This would be three. And that'd be four. Wait, hold on. Okay. Alright, that'd be four. And then the rotation would actually work, I believe. It's just set in a direction. Okay, the gearbox is... They that direction, apparently, so... No matter what you do, it's just gonna go the right normal direction. Unless I can, uh... Change it by, uh, using lever. Alright, let's see. Jumping between axes of uh, rotation can get bulky quickly, which it does. Uh, gearbox is more compact equivalent of the setup. Shafts around corners rotate in mirrored directions. Straight connections will be reversed, which does suck. Oh wait. Hold on. Alright, it's mere equivalent of setup. Shafts around corners rotate in mirrored directions. Straight connections will be reversed. Okay, so if we were to use a connection, so this that's gonna be mirrored if we go to the side, which makes sense. Uh, if we go opposite direction, it's going to be mirrored. So what we want to do is we want to connect it to its side, if we can help it. We can't do it on the side here, but we can definitely rotate it to for it to be on its side. So if we were to do the cog... Alright, double down, there we go. Get the large cog wheel. We were to do the gearbox. Okay, that's gonna rotate that way, which is not what we want. Okay, it's still rotating the wrong way that we need it to. Okay, let's let's abandon the idea. We're gonna do the double as we usually do. There we go. I very much prefer the cogwheel method. There we go. If we could use power to convert it to a different side, I'd love that, but it doesn't seem like it's going to be. 
Although, it makes an easy uh, reversal if we ever want to do that, but I don't think that's going to work. But anyways, it doesn't matter. The point is that we won't be able to get it working as uh, we had originally had intended. But I digress. We are going to do the same trick here. The small and gig gears, like so. There we go. Uh, double small... Like so, and one big. We will need to get a, uh, a reversal, but we should be fine. Okay. Just get, oh. Get that. Put this there. Yeah, the way zombie. There we go. Is that going the right direction? It actually isn't. Oh, so this is actually wrong from this, isn't it? Okay, hold on. That's going... Yeah, we're going that way. This one is going the other way. God, this is so difficult. <laughs> Feels like but then move two steps backwards immediately. Okay, well, whatever the case, we just need to do a big cog, a small cog. You need to do a big cog. Um, into a big cog? Alright, that's not gonna work, I don't think. Because we're gonna get even anyways. Okay, so basically, this is even. This is odd. Even. Uh, but it's... Yeah, so we basically need even current. Uh, if we go this, that makes it even. And if we go here, then it makes it odd of a current. So we need to change the polarity here. Well, the easy way to turn it into the proper polarity is actually to extend it a little bit, isn't it? But we can't do that here, can we? So, I might be able to cheat using, uh, I could use, cheat in using case chain drives. That is an option. Yeah, if we use chain drives, it actually goes the same direction, so. As long as we, uh, use the chain drives, then we should be fine. So we just use the chain... We use a cog wheel to speed it up. Get onto a large cog wheel, like so. Then get into a small cog wheel. And then we get into the small cog wheel here. Or better yet, use a big cog wheel here, like so. And then we can get into a encased chain drive. And it will rotate in the proper direction. And we just connect it up. Okay, that's going that way, this is going that way. Basically same polarity. Works for me. Okay, we just follow the same process here, I think, don't we? Okay. The same speed here, so... Yeah, we get to a small, then hook it onto a big. Oh, 
Okay, well, it's already on a big, so it doesn't matter. But that's on a big and a big, so... Well, it's gonna rotate the same way anyways. It's just, we need to put a small in now. Which is not gonna actually work here, so we just get another big onto a small. Like so. And we then need to rotate the big into position. So we get a big into this position. Then we get him into this side. There we go. And then I guess we chain drive up. I think we do, anyways. Yeah, we chain drive up. There we go. Do need to get there, don't we? So, I might as well try and get there first before I do that. It's annoying that I have to deal with these, but I'll deal with them for the sake of just dealing with them. Okay. Oh, I actually just did it, didn't I? Okay, so as long as we kept it to one, we should be fine. So that's one shift. Yep, same shift. Okay. I think this is right, then. Uh, no, we actually need to get it back into a big gear. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Alright, stop. Be fine. Okay. Well, the easiest way would be to... No. If we don't... A small first, then we do a big cut. Then we're good. Okay, we do a small cog into a big cog. Then we go back into a small cog. Which we then do a big cog here. Into a big cog here. And chain drive towards, but it's actually going the wrong way, I think. It's actually going the wrong way. God, this is so annoying. Hmm. Is there any way I could potentially... No, I highly doubt it. Well, small, big... I could just replicate that design. That is an option. So... Small... Okay, so wait. We've already got the... Yeah, so we just need the... So the big is already here. So we set the big there. We get a small here. Then we get a big here. We get the change words. There we go. Like that. Well, actually, no. The simple thing of using a shaft here, then I can do this and rotate it like so. That way it's actually going that direction. Okay, now it's at the same direction, nice. That's two that are in the position, I do believe. Check to make sure. Uh, yep, looks like they're going the right direction, cool. And I do believe that one's going the right direction, so we are basically golden. Now we just need to set up the gear shift here. 
So that way we can uh, set the machine up properly. Then we can set up the actual other machine, which is the powered, not, not the powered latch, but we can set up the redstone links properly. And we should be good to go. Okay, we're gonna set up the powered latch. Oh, we're gonna set up the powered latch, so we should probably set it up right. Let's see, we got one, two, three, four, five. We set it right here. Okay. Redstone link here, here, and here. All right. Seed. All right, double wheat here. Wheat and seed here. Seed and seed there. Beavers, specifically. Okay. So, anytime we want this machine on, we just flick that. Well, no, we don't flick just that, but... We'll get to it. Basically, I think we've got it uh, hashed out for the most part. And all three should move in at unison at the same time, just from the trigger of one. Their speed should be uniform to everything, so it shouldn't be that big a deal whether it goes back and forward. But ultimately, it goes the right direction. Okay, we now need a gear shift. So that's going to require an anti casing. There we go, one casing. Okay, gear shift has been made, perfect. We then get the typical redstone link setup. So we get a redstone link setup on top. And mainly we should be good to go. Just hop on the gears here, set this up. Oh, whoops. There we go. Oh, whoops. Okay, it's going the wrong direction. Or for some reason it's... Or for some reason it is, I should say. right direction. Okay, we're gonna quickly get yeah, we don't. Uh, we are going to the red here. We're gonna double seed it up. And have it over here. What's it doing? wrong? I must have. Is, is the gantry shaft wrong? It might be. Okay, let's check to see if the gantry shaft is the problem. going the right direction for the spin, but it's not going the right, actually the right direction. Hmm. I wonder what the issue is. I 
don't know. Hmm. That's really weird. I have no idea what the problem is. It should be going the right way. Is it because of the gear shift? It shouldn't be because of the gear shift, because otherwise it would shown. Hmm. Oh right, I should probably also make those farmers now that I think about it. I never actually did that. Oh, did I? Oh no, I didn't forget the plates, thank goodness. Okay. Okay. Alright, let's make some harvesters here. Uh, we're gonna need more andesite casing. Easy enough. There we go. Plenty. Uh, well, more harvesters, I should state. Okay. I uh, will get some super glue on this puppy. Do some oak stair shenanigans. There we go. Chop that. There we go. Do I just have to rotate the op opposite direction? That's going to be really weird. That's really, really weird. Hmm. Hmm. I, I guess we have I can think of this working beyond that, so I guess Alright, I guess shafts, there we go. Okay, I guess it's turning around, isn't it? Yeah, no, it's literally harvesting now. I'm not sure why it has to go this way compared to the other two, which are actually going the right way, but... Eh. I guess it's just something that specifically goes on here. It's really bloody weird. Is there something wrong with the gantry shaft itself? Surely not. I placed... Maybe I did it the wrong way. That might be it. But I highly doubt it. Let's see. Facing this direction, what changes? Oh, now it's going this way. Okay, so it's actually a specific direction that the gantry shaft is going. Oh, that's really weird. That's really weird. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's... I can't believe it. Okay. That would explain so, so much. Okay. So if you literally face a gantry shaft a different direction, then it actually changes the clarity. I mean, that would make the machines altering much easier if you could just shift that around which actually makes things really interesting but good gravy <laughs> it's really interesting okay I'll take that away then our big gear back in play and 
down on the usual encased chain drives and get it rotating the right way. Okay. Pop down. There we go. Now it's not going to be moving because it's apparently going the right... Let's just pick the right direction then. Castle. Because <laughs> apparently direction is everything to this gantry carriage. Okay. And now all three should be working as intended. But I will still need to get the funnel here. So we're going to get some andesite funnels. We're going to quickly wheat and seeds in there. I guess we'll dump some gunpowder. Me flesh. Logs. Light funnels. We'll need at least... I think we're gonna need... Well, we'll just grab the lot, just to be safe. Okay, we are going to need our chest here, but we're going to be upgrading it through to diamond, I guess? And I guess obsidian as well. Okay. Take out block gold. Put one away. Do we have obsidian on us? I don't think we do. No, we got soapstone at closest. Makes sense, though, I suppose. Alright, let's make a diamond chest here. Alright, iron. Gold. Diamond. Okay, maybe too much diamond. Okay, uh, diamond, uh, four diamonds and four glass, and eight obsidian for obsidian chests. So, half the amount of diamonds. Do we have any glass? Uh, I don't think we do. Yeah, I don't think we, yeah, uh, we don't have glass. Okay, so we need to get ourselves some sand, then get ourselves some glass. And I'm probably going to wrap it up there once we get ourselves a diamond chest and all this is working. So I'm going to quickly get the sand that we need and we should be golden. Okay. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20. Okay. Uh, 12. We should have gotten 24. Apparently we got 20... Oh, nope, we did. Okay, cool. We'll just use 24 here. That should be fine enough. We're not looking for the most exquisite amounts, after all. Just enough to cook. Of course, we're going to need a lot more sand, but I think I might be able to get away with that by grinding it down. And I might be able to cook it, actually. Yeah, if I grind sand down from cobblestone, or uh, sandstone, or gravel rather, then I can get that sand. And if I use... If I use bulk blasting, I can actually turn it into glass. Okay, so... Do I have any gravel on me? That actually changes things. Let's see. Uh, gravel. Rocky stone. Gravel. Here we go. We'll take some gravel, and we're going to actually toss it into the smelter furnace here. Just cook the... We can turn the gravel into, uh... Essentially a finished product of sand. If we grind it up. Which works for me. Uh, as for the sand we've currently got, I think I can break into the machine itself real quick. And just toss it into the machine. Why not? Okay, there we go. 
just quickly in the sand, and that will just cook nicely. There we go. And it will just quickly transport for us. Nice. Okay, we should have enough sand for the chest. There we go. Nine should be plenty for what we're doing. Alright. Glass. Diamonds might be in the wrong place, but that's fine. We'll just shift it like so. There we go. Diamond chest. We will need the obsidian chest at some point, which I'm tempted to do right now. We just need water after all. And a lava pool. Yeah, we might as well do it. Why not? There's a lava pool nearby, so we can just easily get the obsidian. Okay. Sleep it off. And we're almost there. Almost there. Okay, so we're just going to quickly rush out, and we're going to open up that lava pool so we can see on the map, or better yet, I'm just going to mark it on the, on the map, because why not? Okay, yep, it's just right here. There we go. Plenty of, plenty of obsidian for us to gather. It's going to take us a little bit, but that's perfectly fine by me. Let's just hope there's no magma under this one. Thankfully not. It gives us an opportunity to mine what we can here. Okay, this makes two. We're going to only get eight for now, but I'm probably going to get all of this obsidian off camera at some point. So that way uh, you guys don't have to see all this grinding of getting obsidian because we are going to need obsidian to get another portal up because I don't want to go all the way down into, you know, God knows where just to get to that portal I made before. So I'm probably going to be using this as a chance to get some obsidian to, you know, make a new portal and have a quick way to the nether. Of course, I'm going to have to get to the Undergarden, like I said before, because if I don't, then I'm not going to be able to get into Tinkers, which will get us faster tools compared to the Diamond Pickaxe, obviously. Alright, but yeah, we're going to get one more obsidian and we should be good to go to just dip. I'll leave the water here, and honestly, I know where it is, so I'll just remember it by memory. Such a notable lava pool, after all, so not hard to remember. Apparently, there's the ice now. Interesting. Probably could carry it along on a leash, but yeah, I don't want to. Okay. From here, yeah, we just slip in, take some obsidian here, there we go, bada bing bada boom, obsidian chest. This is the biggest chest that we're ever going to be making, and it's probably going to be used when we do make a barn at some point, but we shouldn't need to, just yet anyways. Alright, I'm going to start with animals. We want them to funnel out, or at least that's the intent anyways. Okay, not sure what's going on there. Okay, yeah, I guess that's funneling outwards, naturally, okay. Those are going to be funneling out, or funneling out, rather. Words. <laughs> Alright, uh, we're going to have to slip through here, I guess. Oh, I guess we just jump over. That's fine by me. Okay, we hop. Okay, we just sit here then. Like so. Then 
and the site funnel. We're all going to use a cheeseburger just to finish this off for the day. We get another andesite funnel here. Hop over. Alright, everything starts to go in naturally. Cool. We won't be able to access the obsidian chest, but that's perfectly fine by me. Everything's going to be funneling out naturally, so that's good. Alright, now we just need to get the machine on. And the easiest way to do that, obviously, is to trigger it. Well, not trigger it. Well. Okay. Put the dark oak there, because we don't need to express it anymore. All right, everything should be in place. And if my assumption is correct, so long as we place this final block, redstone contact, everything should go the right direction as intended. Because the right side here is going to trigger off that. And we should be good. Alright. Three, two, one, go. Okay. Yep, as expected, it's not going to work first time around. I had predictors as such. Okay. Is there too much stress on the machine, I assume? Three is pushing it a bit, after all. Uh, let's see. Uh, currently, it's set up to here. Oh... I see. We need to reverse the thing. My I did it wrong. But that's an easy fix. Okay, we're actually going to remove that little thing first before we uh, move on. Just so we can uh, at least look at the machine going before we uh, move things. Okay, we're going to take thing here real quick all right we just do set it up the opposite way so instead we want the C other direction and we should be good it's a bit of an awkward thing that we've just ran into but hey it happens okay So we want the Okay, we want the seed option to be on the other way. And then we should be good. So let's get a seed. Uh it's somewhere. Yep, here. There we go. Seed and wheat. So this is gonna be wheat wheat. This is gonna be seed and wheat. There we go. Arm it up. Okay. Now. Let's get this in. Three, two, one, go. Oh. It's loading in as intended. Okay, perfect. That will mean that everything is funneling out. Yep, as expected. And if it can't funnel out anything, it just starts going on its merry way. Of course, uh, this one's probably going to be emptying out first, but it's going to organize generally enough. And it's going to rotate back anyways, so... It shouldn't destroy the crops... Yeah, it's just gonna... It's not gonna get every crop, but it's gonna slow to a, uh... 
to a point where it's actually just going to organize evenly. So it should be fine, all the same. Really, I should make this thing faster. That's all I really got to do. But all the same, it will pump out. Yep, the other two just sort of funnel in, in its own right, and it gives it time to actually funnel out. Yeah. Of course I'd prefer stacks, but you can only do so much here. But whatever. We got it working. That is the important bit. And in fact, if I chop these down real quick and just get dirt in there, should be Two dirt. I guess I'll just take this one because I can, and there we go. Alright. We just set up the dark oak now. And we are good to go. There we go. And while it is incomplete, we have got ourselves. We've essentially got ourselves a farm of sorts, or at least a three-way farm that works on its own merriment. It'll slowly pump itself back. Uh, this one's gonna take the... is gonna lag behind, naturally. But basically, all three of them are going to go in and attack. Well, farm crops. That is the benefit of this machine, and we can turn it off by uh, simply removing the redstone contact here or the redstone well yeah no we can remove it we can stop it by hitting the redstone contact here and if we wanted to start again we uh just place it back down all right i'm gonna go sleep real quick and then i'm gonna wrap it up for today because i'm quite satisfied with those those results we didn't get into making a barn today, but we did manage to, at the very least, get into making a the auto farm much more optimized. We doubled, we tripled down on the uh, process, essentially. Got ourselves some uh, glass. We got some bricks as well, so that's nice. But yeah, no, we managed to get our hands on a nice little farm here that's going to automate itself to oblivion. We are going to be setting the glass up sort of like this. And we're going to have it just go under here. Okay. Oh well. But yeah, we managed to make ourselves a nice little uh, automated farm. I'd say I'm quite satisfied with those results. And we did manage to beautify it a little bit, so it actually looks like a proper, you know, manufacturing building. I did kind of make it close to here, but eh, it's fine. I plan to uh, reorganize this entire system anyways, just a little bit. So the building might actually change its place as well. And I'm going to have to set up pathing anyways, so that's going to be another thing that we have to do. But that's what I that's why I kind of plan just on the whim and see how things play out. We you guys can expect to see about a few more of these machines probably. I wouldn't be surprised if we have like 4, maybe 6. They're all going to be made of the same material, is the plan. So that way it's going to look nice and, like, bulky. So this mountain is going to be, like, bolted up really quickly, but... For the sake of farming, that is a small price to pay. But I digress. Let us just find a position, and we will be good to go. Well, I guess I can just hop to... Yeah, let's just hop up here, and I'll wrap things up. 
Okay, up to here, and there we go. All right, for those of you on YouTube, like, subscribe, comment, hit the bell notification if you want to see more of my stuff. I stream daily, so if you want to catch my streams, you can catch me 3 to 7 MST time. If you want to catch my streams, you can catch me uh, you at FYIPON at twitch.tv. You can check the About section on my YouTube channel, or you can check the uh, YouTube description in the of the videos you're watching. All three options work. Really depends on you guys. For those of you on Twitch, or those of you from YouTube come from Twitch, welcome. Your support is always appreciated. The more support I have, the more content I give you guys. Once I hit 50 followers and 3 concurrent viewers, I should be able to reach affiliate status, which will allow me to give you guys some more content, as I would be encouraged to stream more and, you know, do more stuff. Don't feel obligated to do it, just do it if you like my stuff. I really appreciate your support, I'd like to, and I'd like it to be support overall. I really do appreciate it, though. All the same. For those who are on Twitch who want to get to YouTube, best way to do so is search me up at fymypawn at twitch. Well, no. Uh, search me up using the YouTube search bar at fymypawn. Um, what else is there? Yeah, you check me out. As, uh, if you scroll down, you should be able to... Uh, if you scroll down a little bit, you should be able to find a YouTube uh, uh, photo... If you click that, it will direct you to my YouTube channel. Or, if you're watching from the VOD section, you can check the VOD description, and there should be a link there. Uh, which you can copy into your browser. If you want to watch my older content, best way to do so is on YouTube. It has everything since day one, so if you want to watch the beginning of Go Create series, that's the best way to do so. If you want to watch my new stuff, best way to do so is on Twitch. I stream every day, uh, excluding Sundays, so if you want to watch something specific, that's the best way to do so. I also do certain streams depending on the holidays so you may see something on Easter you may see something on Christmas Halloween that sort of thing if there is a holiday I will try to celebrate it but I'm not going to pursue things small time like um, and I'm not going to support like one day holidays that people get excited about I'm talking things that people get excited out about on like for like a month a wrap year a monthly time thing but i digress i try to stream on those sorts of days so so you'll expect to see better more content those times but i digress i hope you guys enjoyed today's stream i know i did and i'll go see you guys next stream take care everyone and have a good day Man, the Minecraft music just hit it, hit it off there. <laughs> but yeah, no. You guys have a good one. Take care.